Okay, continuing there with part two. Lee's army's got some big decisions. Now, as I mentioned, we've got Longstreet's Corps near Gettysburg with Ewell coming up. And Hill's Corps is engaged with those forces outside Harrisburg. So Lee's got a big decision. Does he keep Hill there, wasting precious time to eliminate that force in the fort, putting a levy on Harrisburg, which give him about 10 or 12 points, which will negate the 10 points he's already lost for the Union being late. But you can see the distances. That's going to take time. And the Union Army is starting to approach. So I've got a big decision. That's one thing I like about this game. The map is so big that any decision you make on the campaign scale is going to affect things to a great degree. So this might be the turning point in the campaign here. Do I keep Hill there, trying to gain 10 more points at Harrisburg, or have Hill immediately march towards Gettysburg? I think I know the decision that Lee would make. He would have Hill join his main army, because I think that's where the showdown is going to occur. In the end, it's going to be a big battle that determines this game. So I'd rather not waste the time trying to take those forces out for 10 points or so. County control, I'm certainly not going to get. You have to disperse your forces to get that, and with the Union Army close by, that's not going to happen. So, for most of um, June 29th, I'll have Hill march to Gettysburg, and Hill, I mean uh, Lee, will either take up a defensive position at Gettysburg, or maybe try to destroy the Union Corps as they come up. If I'm playing this fairly, the Union should come up rather concentrated. So uh, the next turns will be rather important. Let's catch the action after I've done all the movement for that turn. Okay, this is a, an overview of the situation after June 29th, after the recovery phase. All the fatigue markers have been removed. So looking from the north, I did decide to detach Hill's Corps. He left the vicinity of Harrisburg and is marching as fast as he can. Well, easy marches. I haven't gone into extended march or force marches. And the first corps is still south of Gettysburg with Ewell's Corps coming up on the right flank. Custer's brigade here is watching the Confederate right. Sickles has come up. The 11th Corps has come up, and Reynolds. And by easy marches, behind is the 5th Corps, the 2nd and the 12th, and the 6th. So the Union Army is concentrating very nicely. Now you may remember that I said the Union uh, Army came up late, and uh, which gives the, conf uh, the Confederates a deficit in points. They're down about 9 points. Now the other very embarrassing thing is though the Union Army is late, so is General Stuart. Stuart isn't even on the board. Now, I'll be rolling for him this turn, and if he does come on the board, he'll come on way over here. So, as in the real campaign, he's virtually out of the campaign. But what's more, and more embarrassing for Lee's army is the fact that the Union cavalry is well concentrated. It's here covering Lee's left flank. Now, because, of, because I'm playing this solitaire, um, you know, I've got decisions to make for both sides, which isn't really fair. When you've got an opponent, the opponent's either going to decide as Union, while I'm attacking Lee and flushing him out of Pennsylvania, or also I'm, I'm just going to stand on the defensive, which Meade could have done or did do. And uh, it's Lee who has to take the initiative. It's the Confederates that are down points. And they can't very well scatter now and get these county points and city points. They'd be destroyed in the Union counterattacks. So it's kind of coming down to a big battle. Lee's got to take the initiative and hit the Union somewhere and gain points. So that's the stance I'll take. Because the Confederates just can't stay there in Pennsylvania doing nothing. They're the invader. They have to do something. So that's the stance I'll take. And for the Union, I'll take the stance of just blocking Lee and preventing Lee maybe even from retreating 
uh, to the uh, southwest? I don't know. Now, a lot of this will depend on initiative, on who moves first. So generally, if the Confederates move first, they may try and concentrate and hit one of these Union Corps. The Union, of course, will constrict, because in this game you pretty well have to concentrate for battle. You can't spread out like this. Each hex is about, I think the exact scale is 1.1 mile. So, God knows what's going to happen here. But Hill, I mean, uh, Lee certainly has to wait until Hill's core comes up before he, he has any real hitting power. So, um, with that, I'll roll for Stuart to see if Stuart's even coming in on the board. Well, the Confederates rolled a three, which means Stuart is not coming on the board. So here it is, June 29th, and uh, Stuart's more or less not even going to be in this campaign, which is very, very bad for the Confederates. But let's play out June 29th, and we'll catch the video after I've moved all the units for June 29th. Now, if a battle occurs, I'll uh, halt the video there and show you the battle dispositions. But uh, I couldn't tell you what's going to happen now. It'll all depend on die rolls. Who's got the initiative? Okay, we've got some interesting developments here. The Confederates got back-to-back -back moves, which allowed Hill's Third Corps, and he actually got lucky, he got like a six, and he was able to march rapidly towards Gettysburg. So he's just northeast of the town. The uh, Confederates got the initiative again first. Now I've got some real decisions. Do I have Hill come in here and just, you know, guard Lee's left flank? Which is certainly bothered by all this Union cavalry there under Buford and Gregg. Uh, Kilpatrick is behind here at uh, Littlestown. We've got Reynolds' first corps here, a little spread out. Huell's a bit concentrated there. And um, I'm wondering if Huell should strike Reynolds or move off here to the right. Because Lee just can't stay here on the defensive. He's not doing anything. He's not getting any points. So I think I'll open the ball with Huell doing some kind of attack here on Double Day's division. So I guess the, Get the Battle of Gettysburg is going to happen uh, a few miles to the uh, west at Fairfield. And the Gettysburg Military Park will never open. We're in an alternate universe here. And it may become known as the Battle of Fairfield. So I'm going to move Ewell now to uh, against Double Day. We'll see what, he, what we can do. I'll pick up the video after the combat is over. Okay, Ewell got a good roll. He got a six, and that's going to allow him to move Johnson's division down here to hit Doubleday. So we're going to do an attack against Doubleday, and he's got enough moving points to do a prepared attack. Let's catch the action after the battle. Okay, in the Johnson versus Doubleday battle, um, Johnson inflicted a hit on Doubleday's division, disorganized it, and caused it to a fatigue of three. Johnson received only a fatigue of one. So uh, Johnson has damaged up Double Day pretty bad. Okay, Early's division has enough movement points to do a normal attack on Double Day, which he will do. And they'll follow the action after Early has made his attack. Okay, Early damaged Double Day's division by causing it. Uh, to go to fatigue four, and he retreated four squares. Early himself took one loss, uh, got disorganized, and of course he has the fatigue. He will decide not to advance. So the only unit we have left to move in Ewell's core is Rhodes. Let's see what he can do. Okay, Ewell, taking Rhodes' division, moved down here to Middle Creek and assault Robinson's division. So we're going to work out that battle. Ewell has enough moving points to do a prepared attack. But of course, we're attacking across the stream too. But Rhodes is a big division at 16. So uh, this could be an interesting battle. Okay, Reynolds put up a pretty good fight in that one. He uh, got a hit on Rhodes' division. 
to it. Disorganized him. And uh, he didn't want to be picked up. Okay. Gets one fatigue. And uh, Reynolds himself, Robinson's division, got two fatigue. But he held the position. So that was the effect of Ewell's Corps. Net effect? Well, he drove one division back. Fatigue four. Got one Union division fatigue two. But he took some hits in the process. So we'll see who moves next. Okay, this is the situation after June 29th. And the Confederates are in one heck of a mess. This is Hill's Third Corps here, Longstreet's first, and Ewell's second. Now, yes, they did have limited success against Reynolds over here. This is Reynolds Corps, 11th, 3rd, and Slocum's inching his way this way. Hancock is able to go to the west and actually cut off Lee's retreat route. So that's going to be very ugly. Plus, the Confederate and um, the Union Cavalry is just running rampant against Jenkins' poor little single brigade here. So, for all intents and purposes, uh, this campaign is over. I've really blown it with the Confederates. And, of course, I'm learning, too. So, um, what else can I say? This is just going to turn ugly. There's just no point continuing the game. I'm not interested in fighting a bunch of battles in South Mountain here, surrounded. We've got a real Alamo scenario here. Okay, so what did I do wrong in the game? Well, several things, and there are some mitigating circumstances. For one, good old Jeb Stewart never did show up. Not even on the board. So without Confederate cavalry in this game, uh, you're in big trouble. Especially if the Union cavalry comes on concentrated like it is. They can run rings around Lee's army if they're concentrated. The auxiliary forces, like the Confederate reinforcements and the Richmond garrison, the various militia units, didn't play a part in this campaign. One, they didn't come on, and even if they did, it wouldn't have made much difference. I never m once moved the Harpers Ferry garrison, which I could have moved. And they would cut off Lee's retreat here, probably come up here to Falling Waters. And yes, I know that there's all kinds of points for the Confederates if uh, they retreat to the Potomac. And uh, there's various points available. But in this situation with the Union Army virtually surrounding uh, Lee, um, this game is over. Now, in retrospect, maybe I should have concentrated the army around Gettysburg, but even then, uh, Lee's not winning the game by just concentrating his army here. You're going to get some Gettysburg points, fine, but uh, it's only June 29th. You've got many, many, many turns for the Union to counterattack, or the Union to just sit there, and uh, they'll win the game. So, I'm calling it, uh, that's the end of the video. I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, I've learned a lot from playing this game, and I certainly will want to play it again. Uh, it would be fun to play it with an opponent. I think there's only certain things you can do in a solitaire campaign. Uh, maybe you can't do it at all. You, how do you play honest for both sides? It's very difficult in a solitaire game. Perhaps a scenario is the best uh, way to play a solitaire game. So that's it for Roads to Gettysburg 2, the Gettysburg Campaign. I hope you gained something from watching this video. I know I've gained something by playing it. And uh, thank you for watching.